Thank you very much. Again, I want to say, uh, Kevin just told you how long I've been coming. So obviously, since I have to come from Little Rock, you uh, have to know I, I, I really have enjoyed the conference. I've enjoyed the people I've met. And, and it's just been a very relaxing conference. I'm very pleased to be a part of this uh, 12th uh, health care conference and very pleased that uh, Kevin goes to the troubled agony and expense of putting it on every year. And I think he does it because he's very concerned about health care, safety, and, and, and patient advocacy, regardless of what he, I think that this has just been a real concern of his, and, and, and he just really feels very strongly about it. Not only in regard to, you know, we talk about infection, he talks about infection all the time, but I think it's, he's concerned about more than infection, and he always makes sure that we hear, uh, hears about MRSA and some other things, but um, so, so it's, uh, I, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm, very I'm very pleased to be here. Today I'm to talk about uh, patient advocacy. And of course, most of you know I'm, I probably know a lot about patient advocacy, but I probably don't know nearly as much as we need to know. Because I think the first thing we need to know is that we're all, sh uh, should be patient advocates. We should be advocates not only in regard to our own individual family, but we need to be patient advocates in regard to uh, all the patients that are in the hospital, not only our hospital, but in every hospital. And the only way that we can really become good patient advocates, we've got to learn to be better patient advocates as we go along. So what is patient advocacy? As we think about patient advocacy, first of all, it's an, now they're creating a whole new specialty. You can go to school and get a degree in patient advocacy. And so it's really, it, it's really expanding, but it's an area of specialization of healthcare that's concerned with the advocacy of patients, their survivors, their parent, the family, the, their community, and, their, and, and everyone associated with the patient. It can be an organization or an individual. The term patient advocate and patient advocacy, as I said, can refer both to individual advocates providing services that organizations also provide and organizations whose function extend to individual patients. So what are the major ten tenets of advocacy? The first and most important is preserving human dignity. You know, we don't think about that very much. We think, oh, well, we just make them better. Or, you know, if they cut off their finger and sew it back on, well, you know, we don't. But, you know, it's more than that. And we've got to make sure that we preserve our, the patient's dignity and make them sure they feel good about themselves. Have patient equity. You know, all patients, we all, we all walk around and say, well, all patients have a right to health care, but we know that's a lie. We in this, our, our country, doesn't feel that all patients have a right to health care. Look, we're, we're the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't provide health care for all of our people. So that says that we aren't good patient advocates, regardless of what we say. The next thing we say, we provide, we do a good job, I think, for the most part, to provide providing freedom from suffering. And, you know, and I think we all think about that, and we probably do that very well, but we have to do more than just provide freedom from, from suffering. I want to tell you a little story of a, here, and I'll try and make it quickly. But for years ago, we, and, and it relates both to equality and dignity, my brother developed a, what we now, I now know is appendicitis. We didn't know that at the time. We lived in the country, and three-room shack, we were very poor. My brother had, uh, his abdomen was very distended, and, we, and, he, and he had fever, and my mom said, told my dad, he said, Curtis, you've got to take my baby to the doctor. Well, you know, we, we didn't have a car. We lived 13 miles from the nearest doctor. My dad rigged up a, a gurney on the back of a mule, 
and took my brother for 13 miles on the back of a mule to the doctor. Well, then the doctors, most of the doctors at that time, you know, they, they you know, we were, we're talking about, I'm talking about back in the 40s, so, you know, we we're, were talking about a long time ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, you know, they didn't have integrated uh, rooms, but uh, uh, in, integrated uh, waiting rooms. And so my dad was put in a, you know, in a waiting room with my brother, and he was to see all of his other patients. And when he got finished, he was going to see my brother. Well, you know, the nurse recognized that my brother was, you know, he had just really was very, very ill. And so she told the doctor, and the doctor stopped, but he couldn't, there was no hospital. They didn't, no, the hospitals did not accept black patients, so you couldn't, put, couldn't put him in a hospital. Well, the doctor saw my brother, put in a, recognized that he had a ruptured appendix, put in a big draining tube drain, to drain him and put him, and, put, and my daddy had to put him back on the gurney and take him back home. I tell everybody, he would die today. He, you know, he would, he would never live through, you know, he would never live today, but he would, he would die. My brother lived and became a veterinarian. So, <laughs> and so everybody said, well, why did he become a veterinarian? I think that, that was probably the way you treated, that's how you treated people. But I'm saying, but that was because you think, well, advocacy, well, that was, this doctor took a risk of, at least he saw him. His nurse recognized that he, had, he was suffering and had a problem, and so he really reached out to take care of him. So I'm saying that, it, so that to me, we think, well, that's, but that to me is patient advocacy, because we could have just, he could have just let, left him die and, and, and left him there. So these are all things that, that's a part of what we're become, becoming more advocate, more aware of today. What is advocacy in nursing? It, we've got to protect the patient from harm. That's the first thing. We want, don't want to harm. You know, if you get a patient in and you got water, running water on the floor, and oh, oh, me, I walk down and I slip and fall and break my hip and get pneumonia and all these other things that I well, get nowadays. But so, so, we, but you, a part of patient advocacy is also the janitor who scrubbed the floor. If he see the water on the floor and don't go mop up the floor, well then we've got a problem. The patient falls and slips and he could certainly die from that. So we've got, you've got to work with prevention of in injury. We've got to promote good health care and we've got to prevent disabilities. We've got to alleviate from suffering through diagnosis and treatment. And we've got to be advocates, the first role of good nursing and advocacy and care of individual families, communities, and populations. The keys to advocacy, I always think of, I have four more C's on there, is first you have to be a good advocate, you have to have courage to do the right thing. Courage to stand up and speak up. You know, sometimes in being a good advocate, everybody in the hospital don't necessarily agree with that. So sometimes our nurses have to really stand up and speak up and speak out. They have to speak up and speak out in regard to their doctors. They have to speak up, speak out in regard to their, the families. So you have to be good communicators. So I'm, my C's are you, collaboration, cooperation, courage, compassion, comp gotta be competent. The first and most important thing, if you aren't competent to do the job, you can't do a good job if you aren't competent to do, do the job. And, and you've got to be corporate. You have to have cooperation for everybody around you. You know, you can't be a good nurse and take care of everybody and take care of all your patients if you don't talk and communicate, cooperate, and work with everybody else ar around you. And you got to be consistent. You know, you can't do a good job this morning and don't do a good job this afternoon. And you've got to make sure you collaborate. Collaborate with everybody. You have to have, so you have to have good, solid uh, collaboration. What's the role of nursing? The most important role of nursing is to deliver quality health care. Well, you can say, well, what's quality health care? Well, you've got to know about the disease, knowledge about the disease. You've got to be a good patient advocate. You've got to have, help patients make informed decisions regarding their health. 
including navigating a complex medical system. You know, we, our health system has gotten so complex today, most of us don't even know how to navigate the health system. Translating medical terms. You know, a doctor may say, well, you need this kind, and they don't even know what they're talking about. Making ethical decisions. You know, sometimes you're being asked to make a decision, and you don't know, you know, whether it's right or wrong. So I think nurses are involved in helping to do all of those things with, for, as a patient advocate. So what are the attributes of an effective nurse advocate? What do they have to have? They have, first of all, they have to be competent. They have to be objective. They have to be, they have to be flexible. You know, you say, well, this is the rule, this is the way it's done, but if that doesn't fit your patient, well, you may have, need to do it a little bit differently. So you have to have some flexibility. You have to have empathy. You know, you have to really understand. You have to understand that what you used to tell me one time when I was 18, now that I'm 85, I don't understand. You have to tell me two or three times, and I still might not understand. You have to have self-motivation, the nurse advocate, and you have to be accountable for what's going on. You have to be accountable for yourself, your patients, the parents, everybody else on the ward. You have to be committed to your patient, your profession. You're committed to the nursing profession. I mean, a major part of the nursing profession now is being a good advocate. And of course, you have to be committed. You know, sometimes you see doctors, physicians doing things that you don't think just so. Well, you know, I'm saying you can mention it to the physician that he doesn't want to understand. But then, you know, there is a hierarchy, there's a scheme that you have to go through. And I, I recommend that we go through that. I'm saying you can't take it all on yourself to go and tell your doctor, you stupid idiot. Uh, you can't do that. But I'm just saying, but you know, you may have to go to the director, whoever, but there is a hierarchy and a way, and a way you go. And no, if nobody takes care of it, well, you have to keep going until you, it's, if you feel strongly enough about it, until you get something done. And I can assure you that you can. You have to have a sense of responsibility if it's for the best interest of your patient. You have to say, as I told someone earlier, you have to say, I'm going to do it if nobody does it but me. And I can tell you, sometimes when you do that, a heavy hammer falls on your head, but you have to still, it depends on how strongly you feel about it. And then, of course, you have to have, uh, you have to have a strong coping skills. You, know, you have to be able to tolerate some of these things, even, e even when it's tough and even when it's hard. We've got to be transparent. In order to be transparent, we have to have early learning. I, I told someone, I, well, I was talking about my own self, uh, uh, open charts and talking, I, in my charts, the, 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 I saw that it was going on in my charts that they said that I had chronic back pain, but I had no sciatica. When I knew that I had sh running pains all down my leg, I got paralysis on my foot, and then I finally decided I couldn't tolerate it anymore, and I went to the neurosurgeon, and I was operating on it in three weeks. But I'm just saying that you know you have to, the fact the fact that I had an open chart, my chart, and I looked at, at my chart that I said that it said I had chronic back pain with no sciatica. I think they thought I was crazy, but I had decided that I was not going to take pain pills. But, but it, not everybody has that kind of problem. That was me. Uh, it, perhaps to have transparency, if you find somebody else who has some real good ideas, borrow them. I said steal them. But we borrow them and share them. With, you know, and, and I think share things that make a difference, share them. And we have to work as partners. You know, we can't go around doing everything individually. And you, if you see some of your younger nurses or someone coming along, you have to mentor them along to make sure that they are able to learn the things they need to know. And we have to all be teachers and all be learners. You know, we think, well, we know everything, but we've all got to be teachers. We've all got to be learners all the time. And I've, I've gone over this on how to increase tra transparency and improve patient safety. And one of the things that I include is patient advocates need to be included on every board, every committee, 
that's out there. And if they aren't, you need to ask what, ask for why, why they aren't there. I'll keep my eye on the clock. And we've got to be transparent regarding the memberships on the boards and committees. You know, people need to know who's on, the, on those boards and committees. Sometimes people are on those boards and committees that shouldn't be there. Major health organizations like the Agents for Healthcare Research and Quality, all of those that are concerned, well, they need to know that make sure that the data that they're getting is accurate. You know, sometimes hospitals and send in data and send in information that's not really quite what it should be. Uh, executives and clinic clinicians should provide adequate provi provide patient treatment and descriptions of alternatives of tests. Sometimes what's ordered is the most expensive test in the hospital when that test really wasn't needed. So, you know, we, I, and I think nurses are kind of responsible for making sure that patients are aware of that. We need to provide both patients and clinicians with organized support if they're involved in accidents. You know, sometimes when we have a major accident or some doctor makes a major error, or nurse, or we, or whatever, we, we, we don't say anything about it and we try to hide it. Well, I think now we're knowing more and more that we need to ad admit the error and find out what we can do to prevent further errors. If we refuse to admit it, we certainly won't fix it. So I think that's important. And uh, clinicians should create process to address threat, threats to accountability, such as dis if you not find a doctor who's a nurse or anyone who's really not living up to the standards that you feel they should be living up to. Well, we need to report or talk to somebody who, who can. And, uh, and among to improve transparency with public re regulators and payers, they need to look, look over what's going on. You know, sometimes we need to look at our hospital bills, our bills, as, you know, we think, oh, well, I don't pay the bill, whatever. But I think we need to be aware of what's being charged because that pushes up the health care costs tremendously. And regulators should all, and payers should also be sure health care organizations publicly display the measures they use for monitor monitoring. The aim of patient safety is to increase, the aim of transparency is to increase patient safety. And what we need, what we want to do is zero harm. We want to have no harm to our patients. And in order to do that, we have, we have to have a culture of open, open reporting. We have to have a just culture, a learning culture, as well as an informed culture. Safety behaviors and have early prevention training, high reliability, accept human errors and medical errors, respond quickly, timely, standardize our response, be optimistic, and focus on safety. We want our patients to be safe. So the importance of patient advocacy on, by healthcare workers, is first of all, we've got to be aware of the problem. So I chose the word advocacy. So I think awareness of what the problems are and what it is we need to know. We need to be dedicated to higher quality patient care. That's our major dedication. We have to realize that we're the voice and the vision for the powerless patients that's in need of our voice and our care and our attention. We have to be objective. We have to use every opportunity we get. Always remember that opportunities are like a single strand of hair on a bald head man. It only goes around once. And we have to grab it when it's there. So we have to take every opportunity we get to make sure we take care. We have to be good, good communicators. We have to be competent to get the job done. And we have to be committed. And when we're committed, you have to give up your time, your talent, and your treasures. We have to cooperate. Cooperate among everybody that's on, this, on your ward with you. And I always remember that everybody is involved. Your patients, your whomever, from the top to the bottom, that you're, everybody is involved. So as we think about it and we think about what we've done, what we've learned, and what we, where we have to go, I want to tell you one last little bit and about something I've learned in all these hundreds of years I've been around. 
first of all, I've learned that you have to be clear about your own goals. And your goal is to make sure that you take the very best care, provide the best for service for the patients you're taking care of. If that's your goal, be clear about it and make sure nothing gets in the way. You have to realize that you may feel, well, I don't have the power to do anything about that. Always remember, power is never given. It has to, sometimes it has to be taken away. So somebody who's strutting around acting like they have all the power, you, you might have to take it away sometime. Have to have gumption. Ask for what you want. You might get it sometime, not very often, but every once in a while you might you get it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're in, having a problem, and if you didn't, don't know something or don't understand something, somebody around knows. If they don't have somebody, find somebody who knows. So never be afraid to ask for help. Don't worry about who gets the credit. Sometimes we get so involved in wanting all the credit for ourselves and all until we don't get the job done. So don't worry about who gets the credit. Did we get the job done? Can't procrastinate. We have to do it now. What's our role? We have to communicate. We have to make sure we're aware of our content of what we're doing. You know, sometimes we see something and we run around hollering when we don't really have, we don't have all the facts. So we make sure we have all the facts. And then we convene that conference and make sure we're ready when we get ready to do it. And we have to stick to it. You know, sometimes we start something and we say, oh, well, I don't want, stick to it. That's important. And most importantly, let's ask, did we get the job done? So. As, as we move, always remember, when we think of advocacy, think for what our action plan is and realize that for the why in advocacy, it depends on you. It's what you do and what you don't do also makes all the difference in the world. So we have to make sure that we're willing to stick to it, stick it out to the end, and, the, and who we're advocating for, what our goals are, what we're trying to do. So if we're trying to make sure that our patients are healthy and safe and our, and our healthcare workers are safe, that they have adequate numbers of staff taking care of them, that they learn how and know how to lift and move patients, that they don't break their backs down. I didn't break my back lifting patients. I, I, I wish I could say that, but I didn't. But uh, so I think that that's, that's what we have to be about. And so as we move, move about, we have to remember that patient advocacy is like dancing with a bear. When you're dancing with a bear, and there's multiple bears out there, we can't get tired and sit down. We have to wait until all these bears get tired, and then we sit down. Thank you.